In today's video, we're going to have a look at adding some functionality to the Node-RED uh, Raspberry Pi 4. I came across these I.O. cards a while back, so you can get your Groove Sensor or your I2C sensor, things like that, but this is more for industrial instrumentation. Yeah. So I had a Siemens uh, Sipart PS2 valve positioner that had a milliamp input and a milliamp output and I wanted to to drive that up and down automatically so I could start looking at the diagnostics and maybe developing some machine learning so I needed a card that could you know uh, perform that functionality and I found this this company um, uh, Sequent Microsystems and they have a whole range of IO cards that can be stacked on top of the Raspberry Pi and even since I last looked they've got more so you know there's some good relay output modules here um, they are a little bit more expensive but now we're talking about interfacing to industrial sensors um, we have cooling fan units here they even do somewhere a option for DIN rail mounting the, the whole assembly the card that we're looking at is is this card here the eight layer stackable so let's click on that there's a requirement here to add a battery to to back up some sort of um, clock function that's on this card but we don't need that for what we're trying to achieve um, so you, you mount it like this somebody's forgot to put the screws in so it'll be bolted down you then need a power supply. Um, I found one off Amazon. I'll put uh, the part number for it in the link. So this is 24 volts. You don't then power the Raspberry Pi. Um, this will this power supply will power the Raspberry Pi, and you'll get a blue flashing light to let you know it's talking to the Raspberry Pi. I think it communicates to the Pi via I squared C, um, but we'll go through the setup of that and test that in a minute. Uh, so what do you get with this card? This is why I liked it. I probably wasn't going to use all of this, but um, you've got opto isolated inputs, so digital inputs. You've got uh, equivalent to an analog input, 0 to 10 volts, with a 1 kilohertz sample rate. Um, and then this is the bit that I'm interested in because industry instrumentation sensors and now predominantly 4 to 20 unless you go into special communication protocols they may have heart imposed on that but that's what um, we're looking at so in, in this example we'll start off by um, wiring a Siemens level transmitter into this 4 to 20 the card should power it and we'll see what we can we can start uh, doing um, there's some resettable fuse you can see the real-time clock with battery backup so that's why we needed the, the, the battery um, but really it's you know it's a general purpose card for you know automation tasks that take you a little bit away from home automation into industrial automation uh, I haven't used the RS485 port on it yet but you don't necessarily need this card to do RS485 with the Raspberry Pi but it, it comes with it on anyway so before we install the the nodes in node red we've just got a few instances to install actually on our on our Raspberry Pi and if you go to the the sequent microsystems um, page on, on um, github I will put this in uh, uh, the, the link on my blog page you'll see here a readme document that's looking at uh, command control and we can work our way through this now for, for our part of the install we we have already done most of this so let's go through this this procedure so the first thing that we we need to do is to make sure our, our um, I squared C port is enabled this is the config set up for the Raspberry Pi the interface options so this is the I squared C port I click on that it's it's already enabled so I'll click on it again anyway and then I can I can finish so we have to do that and then we need to first of all 
uh, clone the repository. Now I've already done this, but this is this is the command. Again, I will put this on my blog page. So directory already exists. I like the way it says fatal. <laughs> anyway, um, that's not too fatal in my mind. But the, the the directory already exists. If it wasn't there, it would go through through the procedure uh, of installing it. And then we need to change the directory to, to where it's um, cloned all of my information to. So if I use this command, I will put CD in front of that. So this is changing directory to where it has put all of my files. I and mean, I can do an LS on that and that will list everything. Um, and I can um, see under here. Um, I've, I've skipped ahead a couple of sections, but I've already installed the Node Red um, uh, uh, nodes, and you can see them. They're already under this this file. There is a README file, but what we're going to do is we're going to to run an install, and the command for that is sudo make install. You have to be under this directory. Uh, again, if I hit return, I'm it's, it's already installed, so it would go through that install procedure. It's a relatively small program, so it shouldn't take that long to, to install. Now you've installed that, there is a whole list of commands that you can use to, to read the ports. If I just show you that, this mega industrial dash h, if I hit return on that, you'll see all of these commands um, that you can use. So we just put you know, dash h. Um, so you can calibrate the the four to twenty. Uh, you can write a bit of Python code, or you can you can run it, you know, via these commands. It's in, entirely up to you. There isn't a node red node to 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 calibrate the four to twenty inputs on. Unfortunately, let's um, now have a look at node red. So the nodes that we need to install on node red are these uh, contrib sm ind. And you can see here milliamp input output over in our instance of Node Red. So this is the Node Red where I've got all the hardware installed. I can click on Manage Palette, type in SM-IND Industrial. So um, that's the the initials of the company in Industrial, um, and you'll see here the option to install. So we'll install these nodes now. You can see here all the nodes have installed. Under Sequent Microsystems, you can see all the options, and we're going to be looking at 4 to 20 milliamp input. And this is just a little bit of a bugbear of mine. Uh, let's just make this bigger so we can see. Um, this is the should be the start of my flow. This is an input, but then you still have to energize it. Now, there's probably a very good reason for that, but why isn't it not written into the code? So it automatically energizes it and pulls it. It's just a little bit of feedback. So we need to put an inject mode. Now we don't physically need to inject anything into there, so we'll delete all of these. We don't need them. And then we'll set the repeat so it, it repeats every one second. And we'll link that into here. Now when it comes to, to programming this node up, put the values in here. Um, this board stack, you know, we can have multiple of these boards stacked up on top of each other. So we're, we're on level zero, the first board. Um, it's going to output a message payload, which I'll come on to in a minute. And then this channel, this is um, a little bit of a typo in whoever's developed it. It's actually 4 to 20 inputs, it's meant to say there. There are four inputs on this, so you can see here change it we're on input one and the message payload will be a digital representation of the 4 to 20 milliamp signal so 4 or 20 or up to 20 will be transmitted on the payload so if I now put my debug in and you can see here I'm not documenting anything so I'm being a very naughty boy but um, let's have a, a look at this now, the way I've wired my input up, the inputs on this card and the outputs are all passive. So you will need to have 24 volts or 12 to 24 volts onto the 4 to 20 milliamp 
input. Well, my milliamp source um, can do that. I've just got to remember how to set it up. So I'm going to deploy that and we will monitor the, the debug. So let me clear all of these. At the moment, I have my voltage turned off. So I have zero milliamps, more or less. So I'm just going to put the voltage on and it should uh, go to four milliamps. So, so there's a little bit of calibration that needs to, to, be, to be done on this. But the problem is my, my milliamp source is very, very cheap. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really calibrate the, the card to, to this milliamp source. Now, if I keep going up, I think I will go up a milliamp at a time, you should see these values scrolling up the screen and the values are changing as I go up my meter. So I go all the way up to 20 milliamps. Now, there we go. So I need to scale that. And believe it or not, there's a, there's a very, very simple block. And this is probably the first time we've talked about it. But we have this range block here. And again, it's gone to a, a red triangle because we haven't done anything to it. And if I link that to my milliamp output, we've used our milliamp um, multimeter or generator to see that we're going up and down. We can see what the payload is. So it, the payload is 4 to 20 and in this instance I'm just going to have it scaled 0 to 100%. So if I do that I'm going to move this debug now to, to here, deploy that, clear and we will see I'm still at 20 milliamps um, I, I have 99.1 uh, percent. I will take this down to 12 because 12 milliamps should be around 50 percent. So now I'm at 50 percent, 49.586. So I'm, I'm happy with that. You can see that it's it's relatively stable when it's get, when it gets there. So if I go up, so what's that? 6.5 decimal places. So if I go up and then come back down and see 6.5 so it's, re it's 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 relatively repeatable it's not the most accurate setup but um, for doing something say like you're putting a level sensor on which we're going to do in a minute we will be able to to quite accurately you know measure the the contents of a, of a storage vessel so that's what we'll do next um, we'll save this project it's deployed um, and we'll wire up a Siemens um, Citrans LR110 level transmitter. I've wired the um, Citrans LR110 radar into my Raspberry Pi IO card, and this is um, what you can see on what you can see on the screen here is the Bluetooth app. That comes with the radar so this is a you know like I say we're moving away from home automation into industrial um, so this is a milliamp device we've wired it uh, as a loop so this is what you would class as a passive device so it needs 24 volts going to it and then it transmits 4 to 20 milliamps now if you don't understand 4 to 20 milliamps I'll record a video and I'll put it in this blog series so you can understand what that, that means. But you know, if you're moving into the industry sector, uh, you've really got to get a grasp with 4 to 20 milliamp signals. But let's just have a look at what we're, we're, we've done here. Remember, we've scaled it 0 to 100%. Um, and you can see here on my app, there's going to be uh, a little bit of um, inaccuracy on our device because this is a digital signal. So this is reading it straight um, from the digital processor inside the unit um, and then the output of the, the radar is, is analog and then we're bringing the analog signal into another analog to digital converter. We've got cable losses and everything else. So we're not going to be absolutely the, uh, smack on with the two readings but um, let me do a bit of juggling here. So I have the radar. We should be able to see 
the the values moving on node red and on on the app so there we have it um, we now have a loop powered uh, radar device level measurement um, connected to my node red project coming up in the the second video we're going to have a look at scaling our parameters in more detail and then moving them to global memory and then we're going to take our first look at visualizing the data on a node red dashboard and we're going to generate something with some uh, dials on the screen and that will enable us to visualize the data from a, uh, a web UI. So as always, uh, uh, click on the notification bell so you'll, you'll, you'll be bang up to date with all of our releases. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for listening.